This is on direct distribution matching for adapting segmentation networks. My name is Georg Pichler, and I'm going to talk about a domain adaptation approach for semantic segmentation. If we have source domain images and their corresponding ground truth labels, then we can train a segmentation function for that domain based on this label dataset. But if we then face new images from a different target domain that were, for example, taken with a different camera or with a different machine, then usually that segmentation function is going to yield poor results on that new dataset. That's exactly where domain adaptation comes in. The goal there is to obtain a new segmentation function that delivers good performance on the target domain, but still for training only the labeled source domain data as well as unlabeled pairs of source and target domain data are available. Previous work in that area was heavily dominated by adversarial approaches. I want to emphasize this work of Tsai and his colleagues from 2018 because it's what we compared our approach to. These adversarial approaches usually fall into one of two different categories. Either the adversary operates directly at the output level, meaning that the adversary needs to distinguish between the source domain data and target domain data based on the generated segmentation, or that distinction happens earlier at a pixel or intermediate level, where typically first the source domain images are transformed into the style of the target using an adversarial approach, and the normal training of the segmentation network is conducted based on these artificial new target samples. This approach only really works well if the domain shift between source and target is very narrow. However, in the case of medical images, all of that might not even be necessary at all. Because in medical imaging, it's entirely feasible to have a source domain image and a target domain image that both correspond to exactly the same ground truth labels. It can, for example, be achieved by imaging a same patient multiple times using different machines or protocols each time. And this is also exactly what our algorithm exploits, the fact that we can have source and target domain images based on exactly the same ground truth. We do that by training only one segmentation function that works well on the source and the target domain. We use this unlabeled pairs of data to encourage our segmentation network to deliver similar outputs for the source and target domain data. We do so with a normal neural network architecture and a two-part loss function, where the first part here is just the normal semantic segmentation loss applied to the source domain data as well as the corresponding ground truth labels. And the second portion, multiplied with a Lagrangian multiplier, is also a normal semantic segmentation loss function but applied to our network output for the source data and the target domain data. And it's exactly the second term that encourages our network to deliver similar outputs for the aligned source and target domain pairs. To apply that approach, you only need to fix an architecture, the two loss functions, as well as a Lagrangian multiplier, and you can already apply it. We applied it to the challenging problem of human brain MR segmentation. We used the ISEG and MR brains challenge datasets and a slightly modified UNET as a segmentation function. Segmentation was done into three classes, and we used the line T1 and T2 scans as a source and target domain data. The cross-entropy loss was employed, and we performed three runs for cross-validation, where we reported the average dice coefficient over the three classes as our figure of merit. Here are the results of our proposed approach compared to an oracle, that is the segmentation function trained only on the target domain, no adaptation is the segmentation function trained on the source domain only and the previously mentioned adapt segment from 2018 with the same unit segmentation function. You can see that we outperformed that adversarial approach by quite a margin each time and also our approach seems to be more stable during training if you take a look at the empirical standard deviation. We also performed reasonably close to the oracle, here even almost within 1%, here at least within 5%, and as expected, no adaptation at all performs very, very poorly on that data set. Additionally, we noticed a strong asymmetry between training from T1 to T2 or adapting the other way around, but this asymmetry was already previously noticed in the literature. Our main takeaway message from performing this work was that additional structure in data should definitely be used if it's possible. In this case, it was the alignment. In the paper, you can find additional details on the stability of our approach during training, on what happens if the alignment assumption is broken, and also on the impact of the distance functions and the Lagrangian multipliers. Thank you very much.